Hello people, Jem here. I just assembled a new um, BMC64 emulator for uh, personal use. You know that I made this one previously with a Raspberry Pi Zero inside. Uh, for the people who don't know what is BMC64, it's an emulator designed for Raspberry Pi devices and I just assembled some electronic parts and next I designed a case for them and after that I 3D printed the case to use it as an emulator. The emulator just emulates various Commodore computers like Plus4 or PET and Commodore 64 or uh, Commodore 128. So uh, this is this has a rechargeable battery here. So I was using this without uh, any energy cable, and also I put a tiny. Uh, joystick here with two function keys to navigate the uh, virtual keyboard on the screen when uh, I need to press various keys to pass the intros or the trainers on playing games. So the next one I just assembled the keys of my FirePad 64 design. It's a rate adjustable auto fire with cherry buttons underneath. So it's just a WASD formation of keys with fire and auto fire here, and also a lock key, lock switch for auto fire itself. And this just adjust the rate of the auto fire. So I assembled uh, this fire pad design with the rest of the design I made with Raspberry Pi Zero but this time I used a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus because it has analog output here which means we can connect this to a CRT screen or TV as well with the analog output. So let me show you how it works. Also this switch just uh, turns on the key lighting here. Let me show you how it works but before that let me show you the design. I will share these on my blog so you can see that I have a power bank unit here. This is the fire pad um, electronic part assembly here. So this is a hat for uh, Raspberry Pi to distribute the uh, keys for the function keys on the left and also the D sub connectors also on the left to connect real joysticks for the to use with the emulator and next I distributed this GPIO pins through this custom made hat and also the power cables here and there with the LED at this part. And my next step was to put the components to the bottom case which I designed like this. These are the joystick ports and this is the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus here and also I used a simple connectors to expand the USB input to the front panel because emulator supports uh, various keyboards and 
a gamepad to use like this I this is a cheap one but it has a dongle here so you can just connect this to here and use the emulator with this gamepad without any wire which means wireless so this is easy to use on the living room and next I put all the components and screwed all of them with, to fix them and finally I put the fire pad assembly there these are the ports I 3D printed the, the, the top part which is this so I will put the fire pad to this surface here, angular part like this I used some nuts to connect the screws from the bottom part on the front because I wouldn't be able to send the screws from the top surface the bottom just prevents it and what you see here is the final assembly of the top and part case parts so I screwed all of them to connect like this and after making the final part for the keys to cover the front area I just completed the design also I put some caps for the function keys you can see that we have a on and off, bot on and off button on the right an SD a micro SD card expander on the middle and also USB input to connect any keyboard or controller here these are for the real joysticks for the Commodore 64 or similar systems this enables and disables turns on the key lighting I will just trim the um, handle here because it's looking very exposed to damage while moving it on a bag or something so these are the Raspberry Pi outputs and inputs I will just cover this area because this is the power input of the Raspberry Pi but I use a power bank charger to power up the Raspberry Pi connecting anything here may just uh, burn the thing we have an HDMI output and also the analog audio and video output there this is the charge port of the power bank which should be used to uh, charge the system and we have an LED to show that it operates and let's connect it to the uh, real CRT screen this is a 1084 monitor I just connected an analog input from the back and uh, the other side of the cable is a 3.5 millimeter jack connect it here and let's open it alright let me fix the camera you can see that the function keys let me get to the emulator menu and also we have a virtual keyboard here it's easy to just uh, make loading 
type load commands on the by this virtual keyboard. The third button opens up the uh, data set controls. You can play stop or rewind the tapes there. The fourth button just used for the warping uh, the emulator which means if you don't want to wait for loading you just warp enable the warp so it just uh, fast forward the emulation there the next one just opens up the bottom status bar which shows the dataset counter or any um, floppy disk action there so the fourth uh, the seventh one is the space button to use on uh, the games because you know that uh, space button is used for alternative functions on the games so let me show you load a game show you the performance I suggest you to watch this video in 50 FPS it's better to set your monitors on 50 Hertz to show the smooth scrolling animation better to see the smooth scrolling animations better so it's the auto fire here and I will just press the alternative space button to send the flames flame to use the flame trouble like this you can load different games I don't remember how I set the snapshot names because I overwrite them while playing with my daughter right and also we can use this emulator with HD modern screens like one I have here I will just connect the HDMI cable and reopen the device once again but we need to make some adjustments for the HDMI emulation I will change the machine type first to 720p 50 Hz PAL emulation so you see that we have some CRT filtering as well but screen size is not right I will adjust them through the menu Let's make the sizing perfect for pixel sizing like this. Let me open up a demo. I will enable the warp to speed up the loading process since we are using the CRT filtering it's hard for it to speed up so much let me switch the sound to the HDMI output here and there You 
you see that scrolling looks great on this emulator. Also, the simple CRT filtering looks great on these flat screens, which I like the most. Let's check some other games. So it's also possible to connect real joysticks and also I will show you to sh connect the wireless gamepad. Let me save the settings I made so far because switching uh, from back and forth between the CRT screens and the HDMI screens uh, makes it hard to adjust everything every time so I will turn off and on the system you can see that I can control the system with gamepad Also, the gamepad keys are assigned to various functions like enabling entering to menu, speed up the system or space bar, or to open the tape dataset controls. You can all done by just a simple gamepad, and this device can be dire directly connected to a TV on the living room and you can just control the system with this gamepad to play games so this is pretty much what I have done with this device to use on my daily life as you see also the lights can be turned off by here the third function it shows the rate of the auto fire you can see that I can adjust the auto fire rate by seeing this through the lights the key is like this and also I just made a ventilation system here right. And thanks for watching.